everybody. In today's video, we are going to be taking the labels off of these bottles and over probably the course of a couple of days, I'll be piecing together a video on how to pop the tops off of the bottles and sand them down and get them ready to turn into projects. These beer bottles, they're pretty easy to take off the tabs, unlike wine bottles and traditional other bottles. You just peel back the plastic piece with your nail or a knife will do as well. And then you just peel it off. You just take this bottle, let's get it in view better, and you see this tab, you just grab this tab right here and you pull and it will come right off. Now this is just with the plastic type tabs or the labels like Bud Light Platinum and I know a couple other ones have plastic labels like this. Okay everybody, I totally spaced it. I was making all of these bottles and cleaning them up real good and I forgot to tell you how to take the labels off. I did it and I didn't even think to video it when I did it. So you take a container, uh, this mop bucket, you can pick one up at Walmart, the 99 cent store, pretty much anywhere, any store carries mop supplies, you can pick one up. I also have a five gallon bucket. I get them out from my parents' house when they do work. I love these because you can sit them outside and not have to worry about them getting damaged. So you take and you fill up your bucket here. As full as you can get it. You take your bottles. And you fill the bottles too. Make sure it's hot water because cold water won't really do you really any good if you want to get the labels off fast. You take soap, Dawn, um, Ajax, any dish detergent will work. And of course you pour it in with your bottles. And you can fit a good amount of bottles in here. Be sure that you fill the bottles when sticking them in so they don't try and float to the top so you can fully submerge the labels. Now I would, especially in hot water, you can let them soak for a couple hours and they should be ready to peel off. If it's the plastic labels like these Budweiser or Bud Light bottles will have, you don't even need to soak them. You just sit and play with them for a little while and they should come right off. And then, um, so for the paper ones, you soak them and then you follow the rest of the steps that I will show you later in this video. And I'll sometimes take this bucket and I'll set it outside and just start on them the next day taking the labels off. That way they have an optimum amount of time to soak. Maybe use a knife, you can use your nails or any other things, just be careful with the knife. You can sit after you soak your bottle for enough time and the label should come right off. Just like this. And you can either put it down into the water and throw it out in the yard. It'll do really fine for your dirt. It's just like composting it. Or you can just throw it in the trash. Depends on whichever you want to do. Now that we've gone to the now that we've gone to the store because I couldn't find my other bottle of it, we can start cleaning the residue from the labels off our bottles. Okay, this is one of the best ways that I've found. You take your Go or your Fast Orange, I tend to call it Gojo too. And you put it over the label, or at least where the label was, and it's still sticky to the touch. You rub it in there real good. I don't know what it is about this stuff, but it got this stuff in it that keeps it from sticking to everything and it scrubs off really well. Now, to make it go super fast, you get a regular kitchen knife, you hold your bottle, and you just start scratching. Okay? See that? It comes right off. See 
all that. That's the sticky stuff from the label. So you can tell where the line stops. Right over here, there's no line. Here, there's a white line of all that nasty, sticky stuff coming off from the label. And this Gojo just tends to get it off, or past orange tends to get it off really well. Now, with your wine bottles that have the paper um, labels, it is actually very less a lot less residue than what you would get on the beer bottles with the plastic labels. So just get yourself a little bit more of the fast orange and this shouldn't even take but a few minutes and it'll get the last of the paper residue off of your bottle. And see, look at that. That was a lot faster than the beer bottle. And this is your basic $3 bottle of Moscato that you get down at Walmart. I like these bottles the best because they're the easiest to work with. They break really easy with this next technique we're going to use. And, well, it's cheap wine and you can get pretty well drunk off of one bottle. Where's the harm in that, right? Now there's this piece on the top of the bottle. It's actually just a piece of plastic that's sitting on there. Really easy to get off. You can get a knife. Uh, you could probably even, you know, tear it off with your fingernail if they're really strong. I, for one, really like my razor knife. I use it all the time for a lot of projects. You can just stick it up under the lip, cut the edge of it, and it comes right off. Just like that. It's enough to score the paper. Oh, that one went all the way up. And it comes right off. See that? Really easy to do. Okay everybody, so this is your glass scoring machine. I got this on Wish.com for like three to six bucks. Really cheap and easy to get a hold of. FYI, Wish.com takes forever to ship. So if you want to buy it off of eBay or go down to your local hardware store, they may have one. But you are definitely going to be paying a pretty penny for it. If you are willing to wait, then... I would suggest ordering it off of Wish. It works just as good as any expensive one you would get at the hardware store. So here is your standard beer bottle. Alright, now you just pull these up to the bottle to fit perfectly. And of course this right here is your score. Put it about where you want your line. multiple different types of glass scores you can get. Okay, with this one, if you press down too tight with it, the score will actually not work for some reason. Um, all right, this is how you release it, is the switch here. This is how you tighten the sides down to get a little bit tighter. I, for one, like it a little bit more loose. And you just rotate the bottle. And if you can actually hear it right now, cutting the glass. I like to do at least one to two passes on it to get a good line going. I 
again, it would probably be a good idea to wear some safety goggles if you decide. Alright, now we flip it back as soon as you've reached the whole entire length of the bottle. Loosen it up. And there you have it. A beautiful score line. Now this bottle is actually going to be done for a different project. So I'm going to turn the bottle upside down and do it closer to the bottom. Now considering this is a Stella Rosa wine bottle, it's definitely wider than your average beer bottle. Now this will not fit your odd bottles like your oval shaped ones or your square ones obviously because this is just made to cut your round bottles. If you would like to cut your square bottles, I will be attempting that in the future and probably taking a video if it happens to be successful. If not, well, I tried. side ones really good. Try and get them evenly tightened. This one I would actually like to make a wind chime out of. So I'm going to try and make a video for you guys of turning this into a wind chime too. So you have to keep an eye out for that one as well. Okay, so we release this one and now it's tightened down close to the glass. And again, remember, do not tighten this too tight, otherwise it presses in on this and it will not cut your grass glass properly. Okay, now we're starting to get that cutting sound. Now I like to go over it a couple of times just to get that nice deep score. this little piece that I can turn into pretty much a candle, a little saucer. There's multiple different things you can do with these. And there we are. Now we have a second score line on our Stella Rose wine bottle, or Stella Rosa wine bottle. This is one of our $3 Walmart wine bottles. So is this one. This one is clear. This one is actually your Moscato. This one is, oh, I can't remember what this one was. It was made out of grapes or something like that. And here's a unique one I just wanted to do for fun. So I want to do this unique. I know there's a little bit of shadow, but it is actually cutting into the glass. You can see it right there. it. See, 
see how it is cutting into glass. We have made it all the way around this bottle. So pull this back up, it's loose. You're gonna have some glass shavings here, be careful. They're not very sharp. Um, if someone has very sensitive skin, I'm sure you could cut yourself on it. But generally, if anyone knows basic science, glass is nothing but heated sand particles. So you're pretty much helping nature out in making sand. And there you have it. All right, everybody, now we have string and we have scissors. Pretty basic, I get the string at Michael's, maybe Joann's. It's like the cheap, cheap, um, just cheapest string on the lot. Yarn works, pretty much any type of thread along those lines, as long as it's thick, it's thick and can hold your alcohol. You take it and you tie it. Oh look, we have a visitor. Now this first wrap around, you don't have to tie exceptionally tight. I don't know if you can hear all the little paws running around. We got some puppies walking around. Now me being the person that I am, I generally wrap around seven times. One, two, three, four, in there. And you have your string here from your last tie. Go ahead and cut this string and tie it back to the one that is already currently here. It makes it easier that way so you don't have to wrap it, wrap it, wrap it, tie it. Tie it first, wrap it around, and then tie it again. on fire. string nice and tight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And just retie it back, pull it tight. Not too tight, just tight enough to get some pressure in there.
some good tension in it too when you're wrapping around the bottle. So you won't have to pull it too tight when it comes time to tie the knot. to go everybody the safest way to do this I have found is to do it over the sink you have one of these basic dish strainers to catch it when you break the glass so here's your regular beer bottle and if you can tell right here it's been scored by a glass scorer and then string has been tied around it as tight as you can get it it creates pressure for when this is ready to break. Another thing you're gonna need is 91% alcohol, preferably the highest percentage you can get, as well as, as well as your awesome stick lighter to keep from catching to yourself on fire. I like using a stick fire, it's your, or stick lighter. It is your best bet because that stuff is really, really flammable. Okay. This is why we do it in the sink, everybody, because it catches stuff on fire. It is definitely starting to get warm now. Ooh, hear it breaking already. Now when the fire starts going down like this and getting ready to go completely out, you take your alcohol, open it, and you take a little dab as soon as the fire is completely out, and you put it right on the line. Come on, it's cooling. Alright, other side, go. Keep going. Oh, wow. Alright, keep going. Well, it didn't break the way I would have liked, but everybody, there is your broken bottle. Okay, now we have our bottle ready with our twine and our score mark on the bottle. We're going to need help for this. Okay, you have 91% alcohol. You're going to pour it directly on the twine, point the bottle down so it doesn't get on your hands. Rotate. Oh, back this way, it was dry some. Right here, and make sure you get, keep rotating it now. All of the twine, okay, now all the twine is completely saturated in the alcohol. Very flammable, stick lighter is what I would recommend if you're going to do this. Now, he's gonna tilt it at a downward angle to keep it from getting his hands. As soon as I light it on fire, <laughs> get the water, turn on the water. Turn it off, turn it off. Now here's your bottle. Rotate, rotate. <laughs> See folks, this is why we did it in the sink. We have readily available water. Okay. Now he's gonna rotate this bottle until it's ready to break. The bottle gets hot. Yes, it gets very hot, ladies and gentlemen, so be very careful. 
He is also wearing glasses in the case. Oh, our glass broke. Here, wait. Without even having to add any cold pressure. Okay. So now we have two pieces of bottle, almost perfectly broken clean, done with a score machine and some twine, some 91% alcohol, and a stick lighter. And of course, scissors to cut the string. Ready for this video? You got the twine already tied around the bottle, and then you have the score mark. And of course, for this video, you are definitely going to need help, so let's get an extra pair of hands in here. Thank you. Okay, so we have over here 91% alcohol. And when I open the alcohol, it has a very wide mouth, not very safe to use, as you in, uh, we learned in the last few seconds. And a stick lighter, which gives us the length we need. So we poured our alcohol into a shot glass and we have a dropper here to distribute the alcohol without overusing it to be dangerous. You can get this, I got this one at um, Michael's, it came with some scents for making candles. So you just put it directly onto the twine here. As he rotates it. And try and get the, the twine completely wet. And he's going to point the end of the bottle down towards the sink to keep the alcohol, any excess there might be, from getting onto his hands when we light the bottle on fire. Okay, everybody, I think we're ready to go. Much better this time. And now that it's on fire, he's actually tilting the bottle up so the flame reaches the score mark, heating up that mark and hopefully breaking it. It will get very warm, everybody, so be careful, be safe. He's actually wearing glasses now in case the glass breaks and fractures up into his eyes. Wearing gloves may not be such a great idea because if they catch on fire, that's not going to be very safe. And there we have it, another clean break. Okay, everybody. Okay, everybody. So I'm kind of in the process of moving right now. So a lot of my stuff is in storage. I'm doing this at a friend's house. So all I have is a nail file. 
the nail file, which works perfectly fine. Or in storage, I actually have drywall sandpaper bricks. It literally looks like a brick, but it's foam wrapped in sandpaper and it works perfect for this. Now you take your bottle after you get done cracking it and you just sand it down really good. See how it's getting all like that? All that residue right there. Uh, if you have respiratory problems, I would suggest wearing a medical N95 mask and maybe some goggles to protect your eyes. I am a rebel, however, so I am not wearing goggles. And just continue to sand down the real sharp edges really cool noises. Rinse it off real good. And now it is sanded down to where it is not going to cut you. I would honestly suggest getting a better device to sand it with if you want to consider drinking out of it. I personally would not recommend drinking out of anything you do this with because glass can be very sharp. It can cut your mouth. Um, for instance, if you drink out of it right after you get done doing your project, maybe you didn't rinse out all the glass properly. Now you're drinking the equivalent to shards of glass. Hopefully they're sanded down enough to be sand and it won't be a problem, but I hope you uh, understand what I'm trying to say here. So just sand it down really well before you turn it into any project because you obviously don't want to cut yourself when you're molding and manipulating the glass, whatever it is you might be doing. Okay everybody, sandpaper also works really well. Um, if you don't want to destroy your nail file. Um, I have waterproof ones that are also in storage that I get from Selling Hanson. They also work really good. I get them when they're on sale for 99 cents. So just take this sandpaper. This is one of the quickest and easiest ways. Roll it into a circle. Of course you have a round glass, round sandpaper. So it's perfect. And just start sanding. This is a very fine grit sandpaper, so it's actually working quite well.
Just be careful while you're testing it because you do not want to cut yourself. Thank you very much, and you guys have a great day.